All right, class, let's get going with our fourth board topic. Early modern period, 1450 to 1750, essential question. How did Europe influence other continents around the world? So the Islamic empires, the Ottoman Empire, Safids, and uh, Mughal, um, we'll talk about these empires right now. As the Mongol Empire uh, and power declined in uh, present-day Turkey, Osman Bey helped unify the region, and in 1453, he was able to invade Constantinople, ending the Byzantine rule. So the Byzantine Empire began to decline, the Ottoman Empire began to uh, enlarge itself, as so much so that it was able to take over Constantinople. Renamed it Istanbul, uh, it became the new capital and the center for Islamic uh, civilization. The Ottoman Empire uh, took on the old Byzantine Empire borders, uh, so it uh, you know, stretched from the Persian all the way into the Mediterranean uh, area. So the Ottoman Empire was quite large. Uh, Suleiman I, uh, <clears throat> from 1520 to 1566, this was the golden age of the Ottomans. Uh, the Ottoman Empire tried to expand into Europe, but was stopped in Vienna, which is like present-day Hungary. Uh, the Safids to the east in present-day Iran had a contentious relationship with its neighbors. Um, the Ottoman Empire tended to be more uh, Sunni Muslim, and the Savids tended to be more uh, Shia. Um, and you know, even to this day, Iran is is more uh, Shia, and um, most of the people in what is what was the Ottoman Empire is more of a Sunni uh, Muslim area. Now, the Mughal Empire um, ruled in India in 1526 by Babur, who claimed to be a descendant of Genghis Khan. So, you know, this would have been a couple hundred years after Genghis Khan, uh, but nevertheless, uh, he was a Muslim that ruled this area. His grandson was Akbar, uh, who was a great leader of the Mughal Empire. Uh, he was a Muslim, but he allowed a lot of religious toleration in India during this time. I'm gonna make a little move over here. All right, now Akbar's grandson, uh, the Shah Jahan, um, he was the one that had the Taj Mahal built um, for his wife uh, upon their death. Now, shortly after this period in India, new Muslim rulers came to power that persecuted the, the Hindus. So this was a very tumultuous time. Once again, we could probably liken this time to the time in Europe when the Protestants and the Catholics were fighting a lot. Now, during the 1600s, the Europeans began to arrive in India and it would eventually rule the entire subcontinent. Now, elsewhere, in Africa, the years after 1100, uh, strong centralized states developed in Africa, uh, largely due to trade. Uh, both Islamic and European influence began to change Africa. Uh, the kingdoms of Songhai, the Congo, Angola all ro rose with trade, but often the Europeans wanted more, uh, which caused these kingdoms to eventually fail. Now, in China, the Ming Dynasty was able to kick out the Mongols in 1368. Um, early in the 1400s, Zheng He, great sea captain, led fleets of ships throughout the Pacific and Indian Ocean, setting up trade routes. Uh, but the Chinese wanted to remain isolationists, um, so uh, Ming also had internal economic problems, um, so they began to rein in Zheng He, and he didn't have quite the uh, amount of uh, discoveries that he possibly could have. <clears throat> now China tried to solve some of its problems by importing silver for goods and this set up the big silver trade that uh, we're going to be talking about actually next, uh, during actually this week, um, during this 1400 to 1500 time frame. Uh, but there was a, a, a tremendous amount of silver being produced out of the Americas and sent to China. Um, now, the Chinese tried to keep the Europeans out, which was becoming harder and harder. The Jing, or the Manchu, uh, dynasty took over in 1644. Uh, the Ming dynasty just fell apart, a lot of it due to economic problems. Zhonglong was a Confucian ruler from 1735 to 96. He supported the arts and sought to protect Chinese heritage, once again trying to keep those Europeans at bay, keeping them out. Now, the Japanese, 1500, the shoguns of Japan continued to rule, and uh, you know, through this time period, they allowed some Europeans to come and visit. A lot of Christians uh, started to go there to prophetize. But in 1600, uh, established 
a Togawa shogun that was very strict. This time period was also called the Edo period. The capital was moved to Edo or what is present day Tokyo. Um, and this Edo period was very harsh on any outsiders. Uh, all Western people, Christians, were persecuted, and by 1633, I'm sorry, 1635, um, it, uh, this Edo period prohibited Japanese from even leaving the island. So they were very uh, isolated in Japan. In 1640, Portuguese tried to visit, and everybody on the entire ship was killed. So that, you know, that kind of sent a message, don't mess with the Japanese. Uh, Japanese culture during this time period where they were isolated began to thrive. Kabuki theater poetry such as haiku became very popular um, and in Japan it undergoes its own renaissance. Um, but it would continue to remain extremely isolated. Remember, history is no mystery. Take good notes.